Good morning, New Mount Zion family. Welcome to this week's virtual Sunday School class. This class was developed in part utilizing the National Baptist Convention of America Press Manual for Instructors of Sunday School Classes, King James Version of the Holy Bible, along with other reliable research to help our understanding of how best to apply God's word to our daily living, to help each of us be a witness to the goodness of our God during trying times. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We have come humbly before your presence, thanking you for this day's journey. For thou art God, beside you there is no other. We thank thee for your mercy and bountiful blessings. In the name of Jesus Christ, we truly thank you. Bless the under-shepherd of this house of worship, daily helping all to see God's mercy in our lives. We start this day claiming victory over whatever evil that would come against your will. We serve an all-powerful God. We ask in the name of Jesus the Christ for healing strength for those that have fallen ill along this journey knowing that your will surpasses all understanding. Forgive us for any wrong we might have done in the days past and in the future yet to come, if it be thy will. For we are weak and heavy laden. We ask that you hear our prayers, O Lord. Empower this, your obedience, servant to be provided with the blessings of rightfully dividing your words of truth for your glory for our peace of mind that abides in knowing your love for us and in the precious name of jesus christ on this the 13th day of february in the year of our lord 2022 this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. As it reads in Psalms 100 verse 5 of the King James Version of the Holy Words of God. Let everyone under the sound of my voice say amen. Our senior pastor, Reverend Larry L. Roundtree II, welcome you to the New Mount Zion family of born again believers, where we are with God's grace, changing the world through the love of Christ, one soul at a time. I am Reverend Dr. George Berry, and will be your instructor for our classes this month as we discuss examples of how to love as Jesus loves and how to with confidence stand boldly before these trying times for justice and righteousness, knowing that God is real and he protects us all whom believe in the name of Jesus Christ and follow his footsteps. If you need clarification for anything we have discussed today please call or write to our address shown here in the presentation we hope to answer your questions as quickly as possible we are continuing our study god's glory within us amen Under the quarterly theme of God's glory within us, 
This week's lesson focuses on God's word should guide whatever we do. As we start this class, to get in the right mood, we ask that you take a deep breath and let go and let God. <sighs> if you could change one problem in this world for the better, what would it be? You might say something like end poverty and hunger, bring peace to the world. Several other things could be mentioned. Focus on the things that are injustices in the world and how we can challenge them using God's word to show us the way to be victorious. Our lesson scripture for today will be found in the Old Testament book of Ezra, the seventh chapter, the first through the 10th verses, and the 23rd through the 26th verse. To repeat our lesson focus will be God's word should guide whatever we do. Our lesson title will be Ezra seeks God's law. The life need topic for today will be to a discussion on what injustices you have seen. In the Old Testament, the prophet was often called upon to play the role of conscience for the king especially for those monarchs who have become morally insensitive. Quite often, this did not fare well for the prophet. In the case of Nathan, however, the man of God fulfilled his duty to comfort the king, and luckily, the king repented immediately. Tradition tells us that Nathan was a disciple of the prophet Samuel, who himself was not afraid to confront morally wandering leaders like King Saul, despite their power to execute him. Nathan also served King Solomon after David passed away. The kingdom of Israel was served well by the mature spiritual guidance of a prophet brave enough to confront those in power. Ezra seeks God's law. The seventh chapter of Ezra opens with after these things. In the earlier chapters, Ezra, the writer of the book, records the early years of the first generation of Jewish people who returned from captivity in Babylon. There is a gap of some 58 years between the latter part of the chapter six and the opening of chapter seven. Reconstruction of the law is another section the builders completed the temple in Jerusalem, but the people's spiritual condition needed help. Ezra wanted to make the four month journey from Persia to Jerusalem to teach the people God's way. He was a direct descendant of Aaron, which qualified him to be a priest in the temple. He was also well trained as a scribe. Ezra's role was to bring the hearts of the people back to God through the revealed word of God. 
However, the Persian king Xerxes had to approve anyone traveling. The Lord gave Ezra favor in the eyes of the king. So Ezra set out with God's hand of protection and blessings over his travel. God put it upon the king's heart to grant Ezra everything he required for his trip to Jerusalem and more. Ezra possessed full authority to discern the state of Judah and Jerusalem according to God's law. Xerxes believed that satisfying the gods of the people in the conquered territory surrounding Persia was of benefit to the empire. Ezra collected money from the king and from the Jewish exiles who remained in Persia. He carried the papers giving him permission and authority to appoint judges. These leaders punished anyone breaking the rules. By the time Ezra arrived from Persia, the Jews had resided in the land for about 60 years. The, the scripture describes Ezra as a man faithful to the Lord. Ezra knew the law and lived it out. Therefore, the people listened to him respecting him as an effective teacher. He saturated himself in God's word and guided his life according to its truths. David called God's word of lamp to our feet and a light for our path. Just as Ezra committed himself to study God's word, we too should apply it and teach it. This ought to be our goal as his children. Ezra seeks God's law. God has included all things in his word to show us the way to victorious God honoring lives. His word is a treasure chest and the only way to know the jewels inside of it is to read it. There are a couple of questions that we're asked to think about. Finish this sentence if you would. I usually go to for guidance about life. Who do you go to? Who's your confidant? How often do you go to the Bible for guidance about your life? And which scriptures have helped you make decisions about your life? Time doesn't uh, permit us to go very long without going further, but remember these questions and maybe you can answer them later. On question one, you may be friends, you may have relatives, you may have people who have gone through similar situations in your, your life, or you may say a book, websites, or the Bible. The Word of God has everything you, we need to guide our lives. You may say that reading the Bible is very important to you and add that a day without reading God's Word can go aimlessly. It means that you're just wondering and not really sure about which direction to follow next. Without direction for you, God's word 
gives direction to all aspects of, of our lives. And he helps each of you share particular important scriptures that have helped you make decisions. Perhaps John 3.16, for God so loved the world. Or Revelations 3 and 20 has helped you make a decision to follow Christ. Or Romans 3 and 23 showed you that we have all sinned and we all need a savior. Let us now go to the scriptures. We want to look at Ezra, the seventh chapter. You should already have your books at it. The first through seventh verses. Now, after these things, in the reign of Xerxes, king of Persia, Ezra, the son of Saraniah, the son of Ezra, and the son of Hilkiah, the son of Shalazam, the son of Zadok, the son of Athrub, the son of Amariah, the son of Azira, the son of Mear, the son of Zethaniah, the son of Uzai, the son of Bukai, the son of Bushia, the son of Phineas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Adam, the chief priest. This Ezra went up from Babylon and he, ha he was a ready scribe in the law of Moses, which the Lord God of Israel had given. And the king granted him all his requests according to the hand of the Lord, his God upon him. And there went up some of the children of Israel and of the priests and the Levites and the singers and the porters and Lehemias unto Jerusalem in the seventh year of Arxerius, Arxertes, I'm sorry, <laughs> I get hung up there sometimes. During the reign of King Xerxes of Persia, Ezra the priest went back to Judea to teach the exiles God's word. And Ezra's family tree went back many generations to Shalazam, to Amira, to Zertias, to Albisha and Aaron the priest. Ezra, as a teacher and scribe, knew very well the laws of Moses. He was blessed by the king of Persia, who gave him whatever he needed for the journey back to Jerusalem. One group of Jews, including priests, Levites, musicians, gatekeepers, and temple servants returned after the Babylonian exile 
and just several months after the completion of the building of the temple, the rebuilding of the temple. <coughs> Having read the scriptures that we just went over, a couple of questions to start with. Why was Ezra qualified to be a priest and teacher? Well, Ezra's genealogy could be traced back to Aaron, which meant his family would have likely been steeped in the revealed word of God. Why did Ezra need the king's blessing and support in order to succeed? Ezra needed the king's resources and permission in order to travel and maintain order in Jerusalem. Let us move on and find out if he had a successful journey. Let's go to Ezra, the seventh chapter, the eighth through 10th verses. And it reads, and he came to Jerusalem in the fifth month which was in the self year of the king. For upon the first day of the first month began he to go up from Babylon, and on the first day of the fifth month came he to Jerusalem, according to the hand, good hand of his God upon him. And the tenth verse reads, For Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord and to do it and to teach in Israel's statutes and judgments. Ezra left Babylon on the first day of the first month of the Jewish calendar and arrived in Jerusalem four months later, on the first day of the fifth month. This took place during the seventh year of King Artaxerxes reign. God's hand was on Ezra. He was blessed and favored in his dealings with the king because he dedicated himself to the study of God's word and teaching its decrees and the laws to the people. A successful journey? I would say so. How long did it take for Ezra and his entourage to complete their journey? This is one of those review questions we asked every now and then, given guidance from the book. How would you describe Ezra's passion for God's word? The journey of Ezra and those who with him took four months to return to Jerusalem. That's a long time on the road. I have a problem with just going from here to Jacksonville. Following the established trading routes along the Fertile Crescent, which is an area that's used for primarily agriculture. In other words, wasn't a whole lot of people around. The biblical writer used the word devoted which implied not only focused attention, but total buy-in. Ezra's marching orders. Now we'll move on to another part of our scripture study. We're still in the seventh chapter, but we want to go to the 23rd to the 26 verses.
whatsoever is commanded by the God of heaven, let it be diligently done for the house of the God of heaven. For why should there be wrath against the realm of the king and his sons? Also, we certify you that touching any of the priests and the Levites and the singers and the porters and Nethiums are ministers of this house of God. It shall not be lawful to impose toil, tribute, or custom um, upon them. After all, he was given everything to go and do the job with, so he didn't need any more payment. What a blessing. And though Ezra, after the wisdom of thy God, that is in thine hand, set magistrates and judges, which may judge all the people that are beyond the river, all such as know the laws of thy God. And teach ye them that know them not. And whatsoever or whosoever will not do the law of thy God and the law of the king, let judgment be executed speedily upon him, whether it be unto death or to banishment or even to confiscation of goods or to imprisonment. He was given total control. Artaxerxes said Ezra should be given whatever he needed for the use in the temple of God. No limits or boundaries would be put on what Ezra requested. Leaves a lot of room for abuse. The king believed there would not be any wrath on him and his household because they acknowledged God and his laws. The king said no taxes would be placed upon the priests the Levites, the musicians, the gatekeepers, temple servants, or other workers at the house of God. The king also said that those who did not adhere to the instructions of God that Ezra taught would be subject to severe punishment, perhaps even be sentenced to death. This is a good king, y'all, who has bought in to God's plan all the way. Ezra's marching orders. You have read what the marching orders were, was to take control and teach the people God's word. What did the king fear would happen if Ezra failed? And why did the king prohibit Ezra from taxing the temple workers? The king thought the wrath of God might come down on him, which probably reflected in his pagan beliefs in an angry God. The king wanted them to be free of this common burden so they could focus on the work of God. And in the king's mind, 
increase the chances of God's favor on him and his household. He had an ultimate agenda. Healing words on the wall. Has reading scripture ever led to something miraculously happening to you? Write down your answer. Reflect on it. And then share it. Are faith and scripture interrelated when it comes to guidance and promises? Well, I would have to say yes, because that's our guidebook. Why would scripture sometimes be the last place we look for guidance? Well, we think we can do things by ourselves pretty well, but sometimes we need the word of God. In your study books, page 80, there's a short story about some individuals and in that short story, and we invite you to read it and also do the exercise, Adriana was healed because of her faith and because the word of God told her that healing was possible. However, scripture is not like some magic formula that we read and what we read automatically comes true, such as reading Psalms 91 verses 9 through 11, and then saying, you will never be sick. The Holy Scripture often uses God's words to tell us what he wants us to do or give us insights into our problems and questions, sometimes we forget that his word has the best guidance possible and instead turn to our friends, social media, almost anywhere else to find solutions to our problems but to God. Let us remember to rightfully divide the word. Our key verse for today is verse chapter 7, verse 10. For Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord and to do it and to teach in Israel's statutes and judgments. Note here, he says he prepared himself. Before we go to God's word, always, always stop and pray and clear your mind so that you may focus on what the Lord has to say to you. Make God's word the guide for your life. Joshua 1 and 8 says it perfectly this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth and thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and then thou shalt have good success. If you want to be prosperous and experience God's successful way, meditate and study his word. Study day and night. And after you study the word, do what it says to do in the stills small voice 
of the night when it comes to you with an answer. Read, rightfully divide the word in your study books if you haven't already done so. And if you need a book, please let us know and we'll make sure you get a book. Won't cost you nothing. And do the activity in the book. What are some ways to increase your study routine? This could include giving up something else to do regularly and substituting Bible study instead. Signing up online for a daily reading and devotional from God's Word. Or working with a group of people right here in our church who commit to reading a certain amount of scripture each day and holding each other accountable, perhaps a remote study group. The more we read his word, the more likely we are to see his answers to the many issues we face in our lives. Amen. Now we have your assignment for next week. Read Job, the eighth chapter, the first through the tenth verse, and the twentieth through the twenty second. And think about the phrase, life is unfair. And write if you agree or not. And submit it to us. We love to read them and also may be exchanged with someone else. Now, let us close in prayer. We thank you, Almighty God, that we have such a loving God in your children and a God sent under shepherd in the pastor, Larry, Roundtree, for he's a good man. As a sign of your love for us, personified that we can touch and feel God's love. Lord, help all the students studying your word come to life in the courage and strength to fight the challenges of injustice around all of us and pray that we will all do so in a way that honors and glorifies you, Lord God. Help us to be a beacon of light through our Christian behavior. We praise you for the triumph of your goodness over evil through your Son and Savior, Christ Jesus. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. And together we all say, Amen, Amen, Amen. One for the Father, one for the Son, and one for the Holy Spirit. If you desire a student study book, please text, write, or call our office. Numbers are on the slide at the very front. And we'll be glad to ensure you will receive one at no cost to you. The Bible says we have not because we, what? Ask not. Ask and you shall receive. Until we meet again, God bless the readers, hearers, and especially the doers of his almighty word. Be safe, everybody.